Hi, I'm Eva Thea, and we are hosting the first ever episode of Never Had I Ever, a songwriter showcase of epic and everyday first. I'm here tonight with two other Bay Area singer-songwriters, Truco and Hunter Swan. Um, I'm going to introduce them first and let them say a little bit about themselves, and then we will get back to the show. So first up, we have Truco. Hello, <laughs> what's going on? Uh, I'm a Bay Area native. I moved here from Brazil when I was about eight years old. And uh, I've been singing and songwriting, uh, on guitar anyways, ever since my sister got one for Christmas a couple of years ago, or when I was like 15 years old. And then she gave up like a month later. And it was laying around the house and I picked it up and been songwriting ever since. Nice. Yeah. And you just got back from somewhere exciting? I just got back from, yeah, New Zealand and Australia. Nice. I was out there for two years and I've been back for about a year touring or traveling a little bit of both uh, a little bit of both i was playing a lot of live music but just living and kind of getting out of the bay area for a little bit seeing the rest of the world and road tripping around new zealand and just having a good time nice yeah super cool yeah and it's then awesome. our second guest is hunter swan hi my name is hunter i'm a physics phd student at stanford here in the bay area um, originally from iowa and uh, jackson hole wyoming and i have been playing guitar for many years and started songwriting seriously um, about three or four years ago and working on my first album now. Great. Super exciting. Um, so the name of the show is Never Had I Ever. It's kind of a spin-off of the popular college drinking game Never Have I Ever in which you can either hold up fingers or just drink with... So you go around and you say, Never Have I Ever blah blah blah. Usually something kind of body or naughty or something like... Can you give an example? Yeah. Um, never Have I Ever put my <laughs> shoes on my head, but that's not that naughty. That's not that naughty. <laughs> I have never done that either. Never have I put my shoes on somebody else's head. <laughs> Great. So this is the traditional drinking game, but we're putting a different spin on it. This is a songwriter showcase where every song begins with a story that starts with the phrase, never had I ever, because one of the, I also travel a lot, as much as I possibly can. And when people travel, they've got this bucket list and every day they're super stoked about like, oh, I just saw thresher sharks for the first time or I just ate a fried pig's face for the first time. And you're like living every day to do something new for the first time. And I've always been like, what if we lived our whole life like that? Like, what if you could have as much fun in Palo Alto as you did in Costa Rica? So that's kind of the idea behind the show. Um, we're each going to go and do a set of songs, and we're going to introduce our songs with Never Had I Ever. Any questions? <laughs> cool. Then, um, Truco, you're up I'll first. I'll take it off. All right, cool. All right. Um, so, yeah, I used to play Never Have I Ever, that game, when I was, like, probably in, like, eighth grade, ninth grade, around that time. That is too young I to be playing I don't think I ever, game. yeah, well, it wasn't a drinking game back then. But, um... <laughs> What I remember about it really is that like if everyone plays honestly and openly, it's like a really cool game because you kind of see who's, you know, matched up with you in like weird ways, right? Like Becky Fulcher from seventh period English, <laughs> like hasn't done the same thing that I haven't done. It's just us two. But um, what I found out from that game too is that sometimes even though everybody else might do the same thing as you, there's every so often you get that kind of awkward moment where you're the only person in the circle who hasn't done the thing and everybody else has, and you think, is this right? Like, am I, am I like not living my life the way that I'm supposed to? And I kind of noticed that in my life um, when it came to my relationships. And it kind of came into a point where, you know, never had I ever fallen in love. And it's not to say that I'm incapable of love. I'm not a psychopath, <laughs> so please don't worry about that. But, so he says. <laughs> um, yeah, my mom loves me, so, and I love her, so that's good. I got one. Um, but. I hadn't fallen in love in a relationship and I had never said, you know, the words like I love you to somebody outside of like my family or like maybe my friends and had them say it back to me. So um, I came up with this song um, that's about that, about not falling in love and about being scared to kind of put yourself out in that kind of situation. 
Great. All cool. right. Well, we'll go ahead and get set up. It sounds perfect for the theme of the show. Definitely have a couple follow-ups for you later <laughs> regarding your dating life. Are you uh, single right now? Um, I'm yes. sure curious ladies are wondering. Yes, I am uh, <laughs> remarkably single. And um, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Good. I love myself, right? Good. So I said I love you to myself. And uh, so life's been going good. And considering moving down to LA, I don't know that I'm gonna get a relationship anytime soon. But anyone's welcome to try. Yeah. <laughs> I am taking applications. So this one's called Feeling Out. And it's about feeling out. I don't think I've ever fallen in love before Does my mom count it doubt it? I don't like to talk about it And the thing about my fear is that it creeps below the surface Circling, I'm certain This isn't what you want to hear but I've been so still so long I can't be about it I don't need any more reason to doubt it I've been feeling the same way all my life and all I've tried is to sit and hide cause I'm paralyzed now. Oh no, what if I had some emotion and I cut too deep and I start feeling out and then I call just to see how you've been. And you just freak, and I start feeling now. And I start feeling now. And I start feeling now. Out, 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 out. I don't think I've ever fallen in love before, but Grandma still seems hopeful. And that just means she hopes for Someone who can find me on my plane And stand to be so near me Yeah, I don't think she's nearly that far away Cause I've been so still so long I can't be about it I don't need any more reason to doubt it I've been feeling the same way all my life And all I've tried is Sit and hide, cause I'm terrified now. Oh no, what if I get some emotion? And I cut too deep, and I start feeling now. And then I call just to see how you've been. And you just freak, and I start feeling now. And I start feeling now. And I start feeling Cut too deep, and I start feeling now. Yeah, I start feeling now. Yeah, I start feeling out, 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 out. And what if my friends all ask me? What if my friends all ask me? What if my friends all ask me who I think I am? the thing I still ain't figured out and I start feeling now and I start feeling now because they cut too deep and I start feeling now and I start feeling now and I start feeling now oh they cut too deep and I start feeling now 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 I start feeling now now I start feeling now. I don't think I've ever fallen in love before, but maybe it's worth trying. Oh, yay. Yay. It's worth trying. It is worth trying. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that song is pretty self explanatory. It's all about you know, being in love and not falling in love and trying to be yourself and feeling out is kind of a cool way to say bleeding out, but with feelings and emotions, right? 
and sometimes you got to cover up that wound. But um, I did not fall in love, but I did fall in mad infatuation. And during that process, um, never had I ever had problems falling asleep. I have always been a snoozer. I snooze constantly. I sleep probably when I was a kid, like 12 hours a day, you know, and I never had a problem falling asleep until um, I lost somebody that I cared about and I felt it in my soul, you know, and it's one of those things that I still fell asleep after a while, but you, you lay awake in bed and you toss and turn a little bit and you can't get the thought of that person out of your head. And, you know, just every night's agony and it kind of dissipates over time. But um, I came up with a word for that feeling and it's insomnium. So insomnia, but with an M. And uh, this is a song about that. It's called Insomnium. Last chance to breathe, take it away, oh no, take everything. I'm not awake, no, 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 but I can't sleep. I'm stuck in between. And I drift right to the brink where it ain't real, it's real good, make believe. Feel so close and still so far from reach, like I'm giving these things and then they're taken from me. I. I can't sleep without you And I don't do well on my own And I'm like a living statue now You see my eyes, well, they don't ever close Cause ever since you let me go, I'm in can't let you go And ever since you let me go I'm And I fall down, down so easily I can't get back up, up, up I'm down to my knees Feel so close and still so far from me Who I wanted to be And where I wanted you And I sleep without you now and I don't do well on my own and I'm like a living statue my eyes well they don't ever close cause ever since you let me go I'm in can't let you go yeah, Ever since you let me go I'm in Last night I found some sweet relief Momentary dip into my dream There you stood so clearly But I could not speak, then I could not breathe Then I tried to reach you in front of me The drum solo, by the way. <laughs> I, I can't sleep without you. And I don't do well on my own. No, 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 no. And I'm like a living statue now. You see my eyes, well, they don't. 
Ever since you let me go, I'm can't let you go. Never since you let me go, I'm in Thank you guys. Cheers. Amazing. It reminded me of it the first time I was listening to the Beatles. Like that's like such a big compliment. And I'm not to like, you know, I mean that. Like when you're like listening to it and they were experimenting with the sound going all around, like like stereo, I guess. And like you just have really cool dynamics when you're playing like a solo acoustic song. Like it's just like all around me, so it's super cool. Yo, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I think dynamics are everything in music, right? It's, uh, music is, as much as it's a note, it's the space between them. And so um, I'm really working on imp like implementing that into my acoustic playing and making it more of a part of like each song that I write. And every song that I write, I'm becoming like more and more aware of like, oh, what am I doing dynamically? You know, nice. and then as far as the other stuff, like producing ideas, like I'm a bit of a like laptop producer. I wouldn't call myself a professional by any means. But when they pop into my head and I think it's like a really cool idea, I like to try to implement that as much as possible in like a live acoustic setting. Although I don't have like a, you know, like a little speaker that's flying around the room. So, <laughs> right? No, but it totally feels like that. Yeah, oh, thank it. you. Yeah, so when your EP that. comes out, we're going to be hearing a lot of... Yes, my EP. Then. It's going to be the Insomnium EP. So that is the title track off that EP. Nice. And uh, there's two other songs that I have on there, including the two that I just played for you guys. Um, I'm really excited. It should be coming out uh, probably end of January, and it's going to be available on like every platform that streams music, and probably a couple illegal Russian websites as well. Wonderful. I'm going to try to put it everywhere. So if I want to be the first to know when your EP is out, should I like follow you on Facebook? That or? is a very good question, Eva. <laughs> That's a really great question. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com backslash Daniel Truco Music. Um, otherwise, you can find me at YouTube. I'm going to be posting videos on there, and that's um, Truco Productions is the nice. name of the YouTube channel. You better tell me first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I will. I will. Great. Thank you. So Hunter is up next. Do you want to go ahead and... Oh, wait, you're telling your story first. Sure. Let's yeah. hear your first story. Okay. Never have I ever. Yeah, so never had I ever managed to maintain a friendship with somebody after they died uh, <laughs> until a few years ago. Um, we had a family friend, a woman in her 60s named Margaret, and she tragically passed away. Um, she, was, she and her husband were flying from the United States down to Mexico, and she had a heart attack while they were laid over in Texas. And her husband came back on the plane just in time to see her fall down, and they carted her off to a hospital as quickly as they could, but um, unfortunately they declared her brain dead when they got there. And the, her husband, Mike, asked the doctors, he said, is, is there even a one in a million chance that she might wake up from this? And the doctor said, no, not even one in a million. Um, so Mike was, of course, coping with this as best he could. Uh, it was very sudden. Um, they were keeping her alive, her body alive, because she was an organ donor. And uh, Mike was out and about when he got a phone call, and it was his wife, Margaret. And she said, Mike, where are you? Mike, I need you here. Mike, I just found out I was dead. And apparently, one in a million happens, you know, once out of about a million times. Wow. And this was one wow. of those episodes. So. Um, <clears throat> they had announced at her church back in the United States that she had died, and uh, to our knowledge, they never rescinded that statement. So my mom was thinking she should uh, come back in you know, flowing white clothes and <laughs> pick somebody in the, in the congregation who needed nice. a good surprise and uh, walk down the aisle and extend a hand. So anyway, um, this first song I'm going to play is uh, a song I wrote around Halloween time. Um, about how some things can persist even after death. Okay. Wow. Great story. That is a great story. Not where I thought you were going with that. <laughs> no, that took a turn. That was, uh, that was heavy. But cool, right? Very one cool. in a million. One in a million. Like not even one in a million, but like one in a billion, probably. Just no chance. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I can't wait to hear it.
If I loved you, could you love me back? Could you ever be necrophiliac? With undying love, undying and undead. Undying love, undying and undead. you started I was like that story did not go where I thought it was going to go and that's how I felt the entire time you were playing <laughs> every line I was like that's not where I thought that was going yep. so, sarcastic but sincere <laughs> sarcastic but sincere yeah this next song is uh, more sincere but sincere um, <laughs> so this next song is about the weather and never had I ever cared much about the weather despite the fact that I came from a family of farmers who are of course very obsessed with the weather because you need to know when it's going to rain to go out in your field and plant the crops and things like that. Um, but yeah, I, I had never, never had I ever cared about the weather until I started trying to fly airplanes. And a few years ago, I went about getting my pilot's license and I did it in an unconventional way. I packed it into two periods of about three weeks each, um, spread over two summers. And during those three weeks, I was just intensely, intensely focused on learning everything that I needed to know to get my pilot's license. And weather is, of course, one of the most important things for safety in flying. And so I uh, spent a lot of time thinking about cold fronts and thunderstorms and circulation and all that sort of thing. And I sat down with a guitar one day, and all these words were circulating around my head, and it just kind of coalesced into, a, into this next song. <laughs> skies are fair when you are near weather girl what's the chance these winds will blow in a warm front of romance weather girl can you foresee the pressure your system puts on me my circulation is at your control To warm my blood or to chill my soul Ooh, 
as your mood forecasts what weather brews when you frown the north wind blows I sit chills into my bones but when you smile my way your radiant face outshines the a blank canvas of a man when you wave I understand wave and show me who I am Ooh, cause your mood forecasts what weather brews when you frown the north wind blows I sit chills into my bones but when you smile my way, your radiant face outshines the day. Weather girl, you're is clear our skies are fair when you are near nice yo that was awesome fantastic so before the show i was talking to hunter and he told me that he's making a whole album but a lot of the songs on the album aren't really playable as an acoustic solo yeah. song yeah, so it'll be, the album I'm working on will be about 50-50 acoustic and electric. And um, the electrics are, are fun to play, um, but not very suitable for a solo act, unfortunately. So is there a way that you would describe the sound, vibe, or feel of the album? Ooh, um, sarcastic, yeah. Sarcastic. Sar sarcastic <laughs> Even yeah. the guitar solos. As much as I can muster, yeah. Great, and I think... Yeah, I loved, I loved your, uh, your lyricism and... Um, Especially some of your some of your lines are just like really witty and funny. Thank you. you know, I want to eat your brains. That's like, but it's like really it's cute and yet at the same time like deep. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so, like I want you to eat my brains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the way I got through high school English was um, by taking every prompt and sort of turning it on his head and uh, just playing with it as much as possible. Nice. And um, the teachers loved it because it was something sort of refreshing and it was more fun for me to write. And I try to do the same thing with my songs. I like to kind of keep people on their toes and surprise them. That's it, the songwriter's game. Good job, man. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Killed it. Cool, and I think you had another question about the finger picking. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was just wondering, uh, what, what are your influences in terms of, like, where do you get your finger picking techniques? Like, what were the first couple songs that you learned? Yeah, so uh, the way that I learned about finger picking just as an, as an art is from John Fahey, who was kind of the, the granddaddy of um, every acoustic finger picker to come, I would say. Yeah. Um, and I, I, his songs were initially beyond my capabilities, so I started lower. Um, the first song that I learned to play, which was finger picking, which was also the first song that I learned to play and sing at the same time, was Dear Prudence by the Beatles, oh. which I still would say for anybody aspiring to learn guitar, it's, it should be one of the stepping stones, I would say. It's an absolutely beautiful song. Um, great for solo acoustic. And uh, yeah, did a few other of the classics. Um, like Dust in the Wind is another great one, and uh, then graduated to some John Fahey stuff. I've done a little bit of that, and uh, yeah, for, at this point, um, I just like to play with it. You know, you kind of you put your thumb on autopilot yeah. and let it take care of the bass notes, and then your fingers just sort of wander around and pick out fun melodies. So, Dear Prudence is a starting song. My first song was Three Little Birds, and it's three chords. And uh, nice, I, I missed that one too. <laughs> My first yep. song was probably like. Some song I didn't even know, like 500 miles. Not that I would walk 500 miles, but like 100 miles, 100. Do you know that one? No. I said I do. My guitar. I, know that I would walk 1,000 miles. Which is mm. just the 500 miles twice. Basically. <laughs> well, that's something I liked about 500 miles. Is he actually says 100 miles five times. 
Really? Yeah. And it's like, that's kind of onomatopoetic, right? Well, we were arguing the other that. day about what constitutes an onomatopoeia. For example, what, what were we arguing about? Insinuate? I think insinuate is definitely onomatopoetic. It's very snaky sounding. That's a good, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'd huh. say so. It's two against one. Huh. I, I yield the floor. <laughs> you. Cool. Well, I guess I'm up. We can talk about onomatopoeias all day. I sadly made the mistake of letting them go first. <laughs> so now it's me. <laughs> well, tell us about it, Eva. This is, uh, this oh, is your right. I have to tell a story. Show idea. Yeah. My mm -hmm. story is a little sad and gross. Um, never had I ever dislocated a finger. There is a sound that every basketball player knows. And it is the sound of a ball hitting a finger in a very painful way. We hear it and we all just, we know, <laughs> that hurt. So, you know, I was in the paint, I was trying to post up, I wasn't getting the pass, so I cut hard to the ball. And when I play basketball, I always want to guard the biggest, strongest person, whoever scored the most points in the last game, that's who I want to guard now. Cause that's the most fun. Defense is my game. One of the greatest compliments anyone ever gave me was, Eva, you're a white female Dennis Rodman. <laughs> oh my, yeah. And I was like, oh. I see it, I see it, 100%. <laughs> and I just pounded my mic, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so defense is my game. I picked this guy because he was like tall and he had big muscles. But once we started playing, I was like, this guy has no body intelligence. You know, so he was just like this really big guy. I was cutting to the ball and I was about to catch this hard chest pass. And the guy basically tackled me from behind. I'm exaggerating like 2%. But it was like a pretty hard shove from behind, right when I'm about to catch the ball. So we hear that noise, that noise every basketball player knows, mm. but also like kind of a crunchy popping noise as mm. well. And I looked down and my finger was like a staircase. It's not this one, this one's just like that. It was this one, my middle finger. So this was on top of this, which was on top of this. So it was literally a staircase of a finger. Ooh. So nine men are standing around staring at my finger in horror. And so am I. <laughs> Then one of them comes up to me and he's like, I work at the Stanford Hospital. Do you want me to reduce it for you? And I was like, are you a doctor? And he's like, no, but I work at the hospital. And I was like, well, OK, as long as you don't try to do it like they do in Die Hard, because that's not real life. <laughs> um, so just the firm, gentle, steady pull. And what is the Die Hard technique? Slam it against something really hard. Oh, yeah, classic. That's not the right way, <laughs> never. So the guy like straightens out my finger, but it's still hot. It's still swelling before my eyes and I'm in a lot of pain. So I decide I should go to the hospital. My, my friend who works at the hospital, not a doctor, advised that I should because I need x-rays and I'm gonna need a referral for physical therapy anyway. So I'm walking out to my car and I call my then boyfriend and I say, hey, it's okay, it's not like an emergency, but I'm on my way to the emergency room. I hurt myself at basketball. Can you drive me? And so this guy's a scientist, and he was like, ooh, that's really bad timing. I'm actually right in the middle of a protocol. Is it important? I was like, well, I mean, I could drive myself. And he was like, okay. <laughs> So I drove myself to the hospital one-handed, and it's not that bad of a story unless you rewind it about two months. I'm down in Santa Cruz, and the waves are awesome. It's like a gold day. It's a drop everything and go surfing day. So I just got out of the water. I'm going to take a break, and then I'm going to go surf again. And my phone rings, and it's the same guy. And he's like, hey, my throat hurts. I'm going to go to the emergency room. Can you come with me? And I am familiar with the man flu. I knew that it was nothing, but I loved him. So I packed up my board and I got in the car and I drove back across the Santa Cruz mountains and met this guy at the hospital and they sent him home with a diagnosis of the man flu. Wow. Yeah. So that is my story. I had to wait four months to get my revenge, which is this song because it took about four months for me to be able to play guitar again <laughs> after that horrific injury. And two months of physical therapy, which, you know, I've had some pretty gnarly injuries. That was the most intense physical therapy I've ever endured. This is right, Well, we're all stoked that you made a full recovery. 
<laughs> so I'm far. to hear this burn song. <laughs> <laughs> this song is called What I Put In. The secret second title, as you both know, I'm sure, is Newton's third outlaw, because in physics, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. But in relationships, that is not always true. So this is what I put in. I drove over state lines for you when you told me that you had the But when I called from the M emergency room, you said I'd be fine and that I'd get well Hundred percent good enough for me. Oh, thank you. And sweats you. are very practical. I agree with that. They are. They are very practical. They're my daily attire. Mine too. I don't usually look like this. <laughs> Surprise. So my second song. Um, never had I ever flown all the way across the country 
just to hang with someone. I travel all the time. I love to travel, but I usually travel to surf or scuba dive or, you know, see an animal I've never seen before. Never had I ever flown across the country just to visit a buddy. But I've got this high school friend named Joe. We talk every week still. It's been a little while since graduation and we've barely seen each other. Um, we met up a couple years ago in Costa Rica. It ended a little weirdly, not because we were a man and a woman traveling together, but because I convinced him to swim out to this pink sand island with me. It was only like one or two miles offshore. And somehow he got lost at sea for six hours. Whoa. And I thought he was dead. I overheard the police saying they thought he was dead. And I thought, I'm gonna have to call his mother. I don't even know her name. I don't know how to reach her, but I am the only one here who speaks English. And I'm gonna have to call her, his mother and say, Joe is dead. <laughs> But luckily, about six hours into the ordeal, he was rescued by a couple of sailors who fed him cake and brought him back to shore. So I figured it was time to see Joe again. For some reason, he still wants to be friends with me <laughs> after all that. So I flew out to Washington, D.C. this year just to see him. And I've been to D.C. before, and I love D.C. Every time I go, I'm like, I wish I had two more days here between the museums and the monuments to these heroes and these founding fathers who are so remarkable. You know, say what you will about them. None of them are perfect, but for their day and for our day, they were like so insightful, foresightful, amazing uh, founding fathers. And we are lucky to have them. And I always feel this way when I go to DC. But this year I had a new feeling and I started feeling it when I got to the White House and began thinking about who's inside and what his priorities are, not the environment, not the things I care about. So for the first time as I was traveling in DC, I felt this powerful sense of disappointment and betrayal to the extent that when I was in the the lift on the way back to the airport, I like didn't even want to look. I was like, I want to remember it the way I remembered it before I went to the White House, not how I'm feeling right now. So I got on the plane and I wrote this song on the plane on the way back. It's called Jefferson. And I thought it was totally original. Like who's ever written a song about presidents before? And then somebody pointed out to me, well, there's actually a musical about them. So, <laughs> and it's called Hamilton. But this is my song and it's called Jefferson. America. And I took off the capo, but actually I think I need it. Yep, I do. <laughs> so, Jefferson. On my way to the airport Cause I was scared that looking now would tarnish memories Perfect days, endless laughter that was cut short And I wanted to make sure we'd always have DC I want to remember Jefferson Like marble sparkling in the basin Warm breeze ruffling my yellow dress Oh how did we make such a mess But we're over now, self-evident and true around all these monuments remind us of brave heroes and amazing feats from yesteryear and we thought all those times we shared would bind us but instead our great union found its end right here i want to remember jefferson like marble sparkling in the basin saw grandma's name at world war ii what happened sucks what can we do but we're over now self
finally looked when we got on the freeway. There's nothing special about these office buildings anyway. As we take exit 10 beyond the beltway, I hope selective memory is all that's left one day. I want to remember Jefferson, like marble sparkling in the basin. Race scooters up and down the mall. We never thought that we could fall, but we're over now, self-evident and true. I want to remember Jefferson, like marble sparkling in the basin. We love the decorated breeze. A complicated legacy, but we're over now, self-evident and true. Before I go back to my seat, um, I have one more never had I ever story. Never had I ever thought as well as I do now. And never had I ever skateboarded. Never had I ever done a lot of things before I met a very special birthday boy who happens to be here tonight. When he was young, never had he ever had a sibling to share the spotlight with him. But after his younger sister was born, a recurring theme in his household was movie me, mom. So, Justin, come on up here. Let's movie you for a minute. Come on. Happy birthday. I'm not going to, well, should we sing? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Justin. Happy birthday to you. Oh my god, we even no, match. I'm man. <laughs> Speech or do you want to? No, I'm Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> okay, am I? He's a good man. He's a good man. Whew. He loves some incredible songs. Thank you. Do you, here's a question for you. Do you write, do you feel like you can write music about like any situation in your life? And have you done so? Like, do you, do you write about going to the grocery store? I have written songs about many situations that are pretty everyday. I recently tried writing a Thanksgiving song. It was hard. I found it extremely difficult to write a not campy, cheesy, weird sounding song about yeah, Is there a big market gratitude? for Thanksgiving songs? Is that a... I'm not sure. I mean, because we just don't have any good ones. There's Basted so in Blood the from yeah. Saturday Night Live. I have a song that mentions Thanksgiving that I always play during Thanksgiving. But, so I tried at that, I failed, but I have a song about eating my burrito too slowly. Um, <laughs> skateboarding, surfing, I mean, if I like a boy, I'm gonna take him surfing or skateboarding or mountain biking, right? So usually there's some kind of skateboarding incident or mountain biking incident in my music. Yep. <laughs> but yeah. So. Do you write your lyrics first, typically? Usually I do. Usually it starts with a title. So I have a blog thehappytalent.com. And one thing I've learned from blogging is the most important thing is the title. As much as we like to hate on clickbait, it really doesn't matter what you have to say if people aren't going to click on your title. So you have to write a captivating title. So that is how it started for me with a lot of my songs. Um, like sometimes I'll just be driving. One time I was driving behind a Mercedes. And I was like, behind a Mercedes? I kind of like that as a song title. So a lot of times it starts with the title. Sometimes it'll start with the lyrics. It almost always is lyrically driven for me, as you can tell by my not so beautiful guitar work. <laughs> but no, I think it's my dispute that. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Let me say no. But I feel like for me, um, do you? Maybe you do this as well. Maybe you do as well. But I thrive really well when I shut my room door and I make sure that nobody's home, and then I just start like kind of wailing on chords until I find mm. something I like. And then I'll just freestyle ideas until something like melodically clicks and it just like, ah, uh, you know, and like the heavens line up and stuff. And that isn't always the case. In fact, like 90% of the time you just, you know, you got to write garbage. But what I really like about songwriting and uh, Ed Sheeran said this, he's like, 
It's when you turn on a tap at an old house and it, the water just comes out and it's brown and it's gross and it's got all this gunk in it. But if you let it run long enough, eventually it's going to go clear. Right? So I don't know. How, yeah. many, how many songs have you guys written? 50 pages worth. <laughs> I have probably, uh, I don't know, many hours of guitar licks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's where it always starts for me is with something on the guitar. Um, the number of those that have been successfully paired with lyrics is like six. Nice. Something. Yeah. yeah. So not nearly so many. Nice. I am, yes, the antithesis of Eva when it comes to songwriting. <laughs> we should write a song together. That would be a good idea, yeah. <laughs> cool. So it looks like we have time to do one or two more songs. If you've got one more. I do. Um, actually, yeah, tonight we're using, um, and possibly for the, the next episodes too, my, one of my songs is the title track, the instrumental version of it. It's so good. And I'd love to play that for you guys. Okay. I just like, recently yep. like, finished it. <laughs> love to hear um, it. So I guess I'll just tell you here, right, since I'm here. Yeah. Um, so never had I ever um, been in a relationship where I was willing to put in 100% and not receive that back, right? Normally, and this kind of makes me like a jerk, but normally, like, I don't put my whole heart into things until, like, I'm really sure that it's going to work out. And so, like, I really kind of, like, let it delay. But there was this girl I met in Australia, and she was fantastic and our problem was that she didn't want to like put her heart into our relationship, right? So um, it ended up having some some problems, and um, and mostly that came from her not being loved before or giving her heart away and then having it broken. So she had her heart broken many many times, and um, this song is a little bit about that. It's called "Loving on a Leash," and uh, the main lyric on it is like, "If you're loving on a leash, or it ain't love, um, if you got nothing to lose." Right? So it's all about giving your heart away. And uh, I'll play it for you guys now. All right. Yeah. I'm excited to hear it. With lyrics this time. With the lyrics this again. time. With the lyrics. Oh, I mean, I totally want to keep that for the intro if you don't mind. Yes. Please do. <laughs> the full version will be on the EP. Nice. But the instrumental version, that's all yours. Go ahead and meet me. Baby, you should know I never fall And if you're sticking with me You're gonna have to bear a little more soul than that I know the last mother left a couple of scars But that's tissue with some history But even right here a few miles apart With the distance that you keep from me What's it mean to love somebody from far away? I'll just freeze and you keep playing it cool Yeah, you've been loving on a leash But it ain't love when you got nothing to lose Got nothing to lose Oh my God There you go Checks in the sunny weather, nether time or place is better. Always quick to make an excuse. So go ahead and hit me. Nice. Thank you very much. That is a shortened version so we can get Eva up here. Or... Okay, well, I better run up there. Oh. This is a two minute song. <laughs> uh.
Okay, so this is the last song of the night, super short. It's called Feels Like a Lot because never had I ever had so much fun sitting in traffic on Highway 17 as I did when I met this guy. And I think that's a sign of meeting a great guy is, you know, you love sitting in traffic together. And I've got a harmonica for this one. It's called Feels Like a Lot. episode of Never Had I Ever. Thank you, Truco, and thank you, Hunter Swan. Thank and you, I'm your host, Eva Villa. Look for our albums online, and we cannot wait for our second episode. Good night. <laughs>